Hey everybody, it's Natsy Jones here. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I'm so glad that you are here. Like I said before, it's Florida where I live and it's 40 degrees outside. So I am wrapped up like Moses or Mary or one of them from back in the day in the Bible days. And today, you'll be proud of me. I just have one glove on, not two. So I'm trying to learn how to tolerate um, this cold weather. So I'm kind of looking like Michael Jackson today. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway, so today I want to talk about something that is, that's really important. Um, it's, it's about relationships, but it's the way we handle conflict in relationships and the way we um, behave once a relationship is obviously coming to an end. Different people like to handle this different ways, okay? Sometimes when a relationship is ending, there's one person holding on and the other person is walking away. Sometimes when a relationship should come to an end, you have two people holding on and like destroying each other in the process. And then sometimes the two people just walk away. I low-key am team walk away, but it doesn't mean that I'm right. What I'm getting ready to share with you uh, is how I approach ending relationships. I'm not saying this is cut out for everybody, but it has worked for me over the years. Um, but I'm not right. I don't know anything. I will never pretend like I know everything. But I tend to look at relationships and even emotional things and feelings in a very logical way. What is the easiest way to do something? What's the most efficient way to do it? And I try to go that route. So what I want to talk about today is closure. Closure. There was a time in my life, probably my early 20s, when I was obsessed with closure. I felt like relationships should end a certain way. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this relationship ends in a way that would that you would see in a love story in a movie or you know or a film um and sometimes the books that we've read as children and the movies that we watch kind of groom us to believing that there's only one way to end a relationship um this happens a lot with women women are relational we want things to be nice and buttoned up i've learned from my male friends over the years that sometimes you could just end a relationship by walking away. Some men will end a relationship by not even telling you that it's over. And you'll just look up and be like, where'd they go? And they are perfectly fine with it. Some women feel like that's wrong. That's bad. You shouldn't do that. But I learned a lot from men and how, how they simplify things that women tend to complicate. And they don't have the same stress that we have when it comes to relationships. Some people view it as selfish. You call it what you want, but it works. So I have a friend of mine who is in a relationship with someone. The relationship is obviously coming to an end. It's obvious to everyone, but she wants to have one last talk for what's the C word? Closure. Okay. Think of closure like this. If you're in a relationship and there's a door, okay, and one person closes the door, there are a number of different ways they can close the door. They could tell you, hey, I'm about to close the door now. Or they could just close it in the middle of you talking. Or they could slam it. Or they could walk away and leave the door open and they're just walking. You can see their back and they're just walking away and you're looking through the door like, hey, where are you going? But closure comes in many forms. Some of us believe that closure is only truly closure if I close the door. Oh, yes, let's be real. Some of you out there who say you want closure, what you might really want is control of the way that the relationship ends. The problem with that is you can end up dragging out a relationship for years because you want to close the door. You want to close it the way you want to close it, and you want to close it when you want to close it. And the problem with that is there's a whole nother human being on the other side of this door. There's another person in this relationship. Even if they're a bad person who did you wrong, they have every right to close the door just like you have every right to close the door. In a relationship, it would be nice if you could both put your hands on the doorknob and close it together at the same time. 
Most of the time, that's not going to happen. Most of the time, one person is going to close the door. And if you're not the one with your hand on that knob closing the door, but you're obsessed with closure, you're going to have to <laughs> accept the reality that the relationship is over. If it needs to end, it shouldn't matter if I close the door or you close the door. So what does obsession with closure look like? I just need to have one more conversation with this person. I did this in my 20s. I tried to get closure in one relationship about four or five different times. Now, if you're dealing with someone who's manipulative, they can use your obsession with closure to control you. They can dangle that closure in front of your face like a carrot and say, yeah, come on, come get the closure. Come on, come on, come on. And you're running after closure. And next thing you know, two more years have passed and the door is still not closed. I need you to hear me. It doesn't matter who closes the door. If the relationship is dysfunctional, the door needs to be closed. I don't need, I, learned, I got to the point when I matured to understand I don't need closure. I don't need that last conversation with the tear rolling down the face. I don't need to hug you. I don't need to say, I wish you well, my love. I don't need any of that. I need you to go away. Even if I love you, my time is so precious. And your time is too, no matter what you think. Y'all see my bedroom? She's in the back. <laughs> I meant to push that out of you. But um, your time is precious. That's the only thing you're not getting more of. You're not getting more time. Do not waste one minute of your time trying to get closure in a relationship that's dead. You don't know if your relationship is dead or not. Ask somebody you can trust. People around you, I guarantee you, if you're experiencing angst in your relationship, there are people around you who are close to you who are just waiting for it to end because they're tired of you suffering. It's hard to watch people you love go through things that they have, that they could really stop if they wanted to. What does closure look like sometimes? Let's get a scenario. Let's just say you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't call you as much as you call them. They don't reach out. They don't seem to be putting as much effort into the relationship as you are. You got common sense. You know if I call you uh, twice a week and you call me once every two months, that that is not an equal relationship. If I've expressed this to you and you still haven't changed, I know now that this relationship is not as important to you as it is to me, I need to make some adjustments. I need to decide, am I okay with having a relationship where I only talk to the person at once every two months? Me personally, I don't see the point in doing that. If I only talk to you once every two months, every time I'm going to have to catch you up on stuff, um, it's probably going to be small talk. It's like, what's the point? If you want to know what's going on with me, look on Facebook. I post everything on Facebook. That's an unnecessary relationship. We don't have to keep letting this dangle on just because of nostalgia's sake. I know you've been in my life for a long time. This relationship has run its course. I'm not angry. But I don't like a bunch of stuff taking up space that has no purpose. I'm also a minimalist when it comes to my house. I love to throw things away. I go through my kids' room. Okay, what haven't you worn in the past two years? Let's get rid of it. I don't like clutter. I don't like a bunch of stuff. Even the stuff in my office right now, this is for my kids. And I told them, if you don't get it out, I'm throwing some stuff away. I don't like wasted space. I don't like having things around that serve no purpose, including relationships. Because my time is so precious. Your time is so precious. Please take inventory of your relationship catalog as we're going into 2024. And think about which relationships are just taking up space and sucking time out of your life that you could be using to do productive things. Sometimes it's just an hour here and there, but those hours add up just like pennies add up. And say you lose a dollar every day, it may seem like nothing until you count it up. At the end of the year, that's $365. That's a car note. Depending on what kind of car you have. Forget about closure. If you want closure and you're looking for this happy buttoned up ending to a relationship and the other person is showing no sign of caring about how the relationship ends, they're not invested, they've already detached from the relationship, let it go. Let it go. 
what you may not be aware of is the door has already been closed and you're just standing there in front of a closed door because you didn't get to close it. Check your ego. Say, ego, it doesn't matter that I didn't close it. The point, close it. The point is it needed to be closed and it's closed now. So now I can go on with my life. Sometimes in life, we give all of our attention and energy to the negative things, to the relationships that need all the work, to the drama, and we overlook the people in our lives that bring us joy, the people in our lives that we don't have to chase down because they're there, and we take those people for granted because we like to work, we like to chase, we love the drama. We're addicted to drama sometimes, but sometimes you got to say, you know what, it's okay. If you haven't called me in so over, however many months, weeks, think about it. Sometimes they've set you free and you didn't even know it. Sometimes we're in relationships that we don't really even enjoy, but we've been taught somewhere to value every relationship. Every relationship does not have value. I remember uh, um, there was the lady I was talking to. She had this trifling husband who was cheating on a real bad and I was like, why are you uh, why are you still dealing with him? I don't understand. And she said, you know, a long time ago, my mom raised me to believe that a piece of man is better than no man at all. There's some things that we've learned from our parents or learned growing up that we need to let go of because they are not good. We need to say, I know what you were trying to teach me, but I've learned that that's not true. So I'm not going to carry that forward. All relationships do not have value. A piece of man is not better than no man at all. A piece of woman is not better than no woman at all. Let me tell you what's valuable. Peace. Don't get a piece of man. Don't get a piece of woman. Get you some peace. If you're giving yourself wholly to a relationship, you deserve to receive someone wholly back. If I'm giving you 100% and you're giving me 20, you got to go. You got to go. I don't care if you go or I go. But some going needs to happen. When it's time to get going. Because I deserve to receive at least something close to what I'm putting in. It's not always going to be 100, 100, or 50, 50 in a relationship. Sometimes you give more. Sometimes you give less. But when you average all that up and tally all that up, that needs to be something close to equal. I am not interested in any relationship where I'm giving way more than the other person. That is not fair to me. It's not fair to you. So if someone who does not value you for whatever reason, it could be your fault. <laughs> Excuse the snort. It could be your fault. You could be <coughs> a difficult person to deal with. We all have issues. We all have flaws. It doesn't matter what your flaw is. If you're constantly working to grow and become a better person, there are people in your life who are graced to deal with your flaws and they benefit from your strengths. If whatever person that's in your life doesn't seem to be able to deal with your flaws, they can go. What I learned a long time ago, and this set me free. Ooh, y'all don't know how this set me free. I learned that everybody's replaceable. Everybody, except my children my parents to some degree. And even with that, they don't feel replaceable, but there are people who have lost children or people whose children have walked away, don't want to have anything to do with them. And then someone else comes in their life like a mentee or something and, and fills that gap of child and they form a mother child relationship or a father child relationship. So even that, yeah, everybody's replaceable. There are so billions of people on the face of this planet. If you are allowing one person to run you through the ringer and burn up all your time, energy, and disrespect you and treat you like you don't matter, that's on you. You do not have to do that. There is somebody else who will value you. This has helped me in business. This has helped me in my romantic relationships, in my romantic relationships when I was single. There is always someone else. If this person won't give you the respect and love you need, I promise you there is someone else. And the same goes for you. If you don't know how to act right in a relationship, please don't feel irreplaceable. I love that Beyonce song back in the day. Don't, don't think you're irreplaceable. Nobody is irreplaceable. Not you, not me. So act right. Act like you care. 
Value the people in your life who have been who have been there for you, who are there to love you and respect you. Put effort into your relationships and expect effort from the other person. That's maturity. That's how relationships are supposed to work. And if you're dealing with somebody who can't do that, replace them. That's not a bad word. Replace is not a bad word. Okay? It's better to replace than rewind. Second thing I learned over the years when it comes to relationships. And this may seem harsh, but I promise you I believe it to my core. I never feel obligated to do anything for anyone. Never. I do what I do because I love someone, because I want to do it, because I feel like doing it. But you cannot make me feel obligated to do anything for you. Because then you're controlling me now. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. I'm obligated to take care of my children. I have an obligation to my husband um, because we're in covenant with God. To a certain degree. There are some times where I'm like, I'm not doing such and such with my husband because he's not appreciated. Blah, 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 or I'll do the bare minimum. Same thing with my kids. If you're not treating me right, I can pull back and give you the bare minimum until you get it together. But you are not obligated outside of your spouse and your children. That's the, Those are the only people that you may have some obligation to and, and family like parents, siblings, some. But when people are acting right, even family, even those people, like I do not have to pick up every time you call. I do not have to listen to you. I don't have to listen to you just because you want to talk. If the things that are coming out of your mouth are toxic and in, impacting me in a negative way, I am not obligated to give you my time. I'm obligated to love you and I'm obligated to pray for you. I'm obligated to save your life if you were dying and I can, and I can change that. But I am not obligated to let you waste my time and run out my energy. Nobody, I'm not obligated to anybody for that. You have to love yourself. You have to value yourself and your time. And when you set those parameters, when you set those boundaries with people early on in relationships, you have better relationships because people understand when I come to you, I need to come correct. When I come to you, I need to be honest because if I'm not honest, you're not going to play with me like that. And there's some people I know I can play with and then other people I know I can't play with. I have to come to them correct. And if I'm not ready to be honest and real, then I might as well not even go over there. There have been people that have backed away from me because they knew I, I don't play the radio or the TV. And I appreciate that. You can't hurt my feelings by backing up from me. I'm an only child, which was a blessing and a curse. All my lonely days were in my early childhood. Eventually, I learned that loneliness is a state of mind. You could be lonely in a crowd of people. You could be lonely in a room full of people. And so I got delivered from loneliness. So I learned how to enjoy my own company, how to enjoy my own thoughts, and how to um, spend time alone and find the value in that. There's so much I can get done. There's so much I can realize in that time of aloneness, which is not bad. Loneliness is bad. Aloneness is not. So now, if someone tries to manipulate me by withdrawing from me, to punish me for not doing something that they want me to do. That doesn't work with me. I will let you withdraw. I will also withdraw. And then we just will not be in each other's lives until somebody comes back. And it probably won't be me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know how to love people from a distance. My Uncle Todd taught me that. When I used to be so invested in people and just wanting them to be okay and... He's, and, but but also getting hurt in relationships. He said, hey, some people, baby. Thank you, Uncle Todd, for teaching me this. He said, some people, you have to love from a distance. What that means is when I think about you, I send you love. God, I hope she's okay. God, I hope he's all right. But I got to move on with my life because what's most important to me, my priorities, my purpose, my health, my family, my children, my husband, that's my priority. Everything else has to kind of fit around that. And if it doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. So 
please, if the relationship is coming to an end, if that milk, that relationship milk and that refrigerator of life has passed the expiration date, if that milk has spoiled, don't try to make sour cream, don't try to make cream cheese, don't try to make blue cheese, throw the milk away. And if, just, if it just so happens that somebody else comes in there, opens the refrigerator and throws out that rotten milk, be grateful because at least it's gone. Y'all, please value yourselves, value your time, value what you bring to a relationship. I don't care what kind of relationship it is, family, romantic, um, business relationship, value yourself, especially if you're giving a hundred percent effort and you're committed to growth and progress. Understand there are some people who are going to fit and some people who are not. Do not get overly attached to anyone in this life because some people are there temporarily. And when a relationship is over, even if it doesn't end in a pretty packaged way, like you see in the romantic comedy movies, be grateful to God that it's over because it's made space for something new and something better in your life. I hope this video blessed you. I hope it has inspired you to value you and everything that you have to bring to anyone else in your life. And um, I hope all your relationships get better. If they're good, I hope they get better. If they're bad, I hope they end. See you next time. Thanks for watching.